Uh, I got to ask you at a few different attempts at a theory of everything, especially recently. Uh, so I've been for many years, a big fan of cellular automata of complex systems. And obviously if, uh, because of that, a fan of Stephen Wolfram's work on in that space, but he's recently been talking about a theory of everything through his physics project, essentially. Yep. Uh, what do you think about this kind of discrete theory of everything for like from simple rules and simple objects and hypergraphs emerges all of our reality where time and space are emergent basically everything we see around us is emergent. yeah i yeah i, I have to say unfortunately i have kind of pretty much zero sympathy for that i mean i don't um I, see, I spent a little time looking at it and i just don't see it doesn't seem to me to get anywhere and and it it, it really is just really really doesn't agree at all with with what, what with what I'm seeing this the kind of unification of math and physics that I'm kind of talking about around certain kinds of very deep ideas about geometry and stuff. This, if you want to believe that that, that your things are really coming out of cellular automata at the most um, fundamental level, you have to believe that everything that I've seen my whole career and, and as as beautiful, powerful ideas that that's all just kind of a mirage, which just kind of randomly is emerging from these more basic, very, very simple-minded things. And I'm, you have to give me some serious evidence for that, and I'm saying nothing. So the, uh, mirage, you don't think there could be a consistency where uh, things like quantum mechanics could, could emerge from much, much, much smaller, discrete like computational type systems. Well, I think from the point of view of certain mathematical point of view, quantum mechanics is already mathematically as simple as it gets. It really is a story about really the, the fundamental objects that you work with and when you write down a quantum theory are in some in some one point of view precisely the fundamental objects at the deepest levels of mathematics that you're working with. They're exactly the same. So and cellular automata are something completely different, which don't fit into these structures. And so I just don't see why. Anyway, anyway I don't see it as a promising, uh, you know, promising thing to do. And then just looking at it and seeing, does this go anywhere? Does this solve any problem that I've ever, that I didn't, does this solve any problem of any kind? I just, I just don't see it. Yeah, to me, cellular automata and these hypographs, I'm not sure solving a problem is even the standard to apply here at this moment, to me, the fascinating thing is that the question it asks have no good answers. So yeah. there's not good math explaining, forget the physics of it, math explaining the behavior of complex systems. Yeah. And that to me is both exciting and paralyzing. Like we're at the very early days of understanding, you know, how complicated and fascinating things emerge from simple rules. Yeah, you know, and I agree, I think, I think that is a, a truly great problem, and depending where it goes, it may be, um, you know, it, it it may start to develop some kind of connections to the the things that I've kind of found more fruitful and hard to know. It just, uh, I think, a lot of that area, I, I kind of strongly feel I best not say too much about it because I, I just I don't know too much about it. And uh, I mean, again, we're back to this original problem that you know your time in life is. Uh, is limited. You have to figure out what you're going to spend your time thinking about, and that that's something I just never seen enough to convince me to spend more time thinking about. Well, also timing. It's not just that our time is limited, but yeah. uh, the timing of the kind of things you think about. There, there's some aspect to cellular atomic these kinds of objects that it feels like we're very many years away from having big breakthroughs on. Yeah. And so it's like you have to pick the problems that are solvable today. In fact, my intuition again, not perhaps biased, is it feels like the kind of systems that, complex systems that cellular automata are, would not be solved by human brains. Yeah. It feels like, well, like, it feels like something post-human that will solve that problem, <laughs> or like fun, significantly yeah. enhanced humans, meaning like using computational tools, very powerful computational tools to us, to, to, to crack these problems open. Um, that's that's if our approach to science, our, our ability to understand science, our, our ability to understand physics will become more and more computational, or there'll be a whole field that's computational in nature, which currently is not the case. Like currently, computation is the thing that sort of assists us in um, 
understanding science the way we've been doing it all along. But if there's a whole new, I mean, that Wolfram new kind of science, right? It's <laughs> a little bit dramatic, but you know, this if computers could do science on their own, computational systems, perhaps um, that's the way they would do the science. They would try to understand the cellular automata. And that feels like we're decades away. So yeah. uh, perhaps it'll crack open some interesting facets of this physics problem, but it's it's very far away. So timing uh, is everything. That, that, that's perfectly possible, yeah.